He just might be sitting on top of the world these days. Randy Smallwood is the CEO of Silver Wheaton, uh, considered you know, the top streaming company in terms of uh, revenue. And he joins us here at the Minds of Money conference in Toronto. Randy, always good to have you on the show. Daniela, I always enjoy it. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Randy. Well, okay, before this show, you were at Denver Gold. And uh, I like a few things you said there, so that's why I want to leave with you uh, here today. Um, you said you were eyeing some junior mining deals and that you'd like to add three to four uh, deals here. Now, just for the folks back at home, three years ago, Silver Wheaton was, uh, you know, focused more on 100 million plus deals. You kind of refocused out looking at the smaller deals here. Have you found any you like right now? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's what we're focusing on is what's called an early deposit structure. And what that does is that it supplies capital to companies pre-feasibility level, right? Because Typically, after a feasibility comes into place, a mining company then has access to debt as a source of capital in order to build these projects going forward. But before that feasibility is completed, um, the only source of capital is the equity market. And the challenge is the equity market it hasn't always been supportive. Um, we're starting to see some strength in the precious metal space, but it's the base metal companies. It's the, it's the companies that have copper porphyries, early stage, they've got a, a preliminary scoping study done on it, but they need capital somewhere. And they don't want to issue shares in this market. So these, these, um, these early deposit structure agreements that we've done, we've already completed two of them and we're eager to complete a few more. And what does is it gives us good long-term growth opportunity on some very promising projects, there's definitely a bit more risk associated to it. But like most things in life, risk is always offset by a better reward out, out there. And so we do think there's some really good upside on these projects. We're actively looking. Um, we do think it's an excellent way of financing some of these guys, uh, some of these uh, companies in terms of moving them forward. And so fingers crossed. Pasqualama, another fingers crossed story <laughs> maybe here. How's that segue? Um, you've been known to say it's the best half-built gold mine. Yes. <laughs> and when it will eventually be finished, it could possibly be the best gold mine. But yes. the question is, is it more of an albatross now or is it really this half best gold mine no, here, Randy? It's not an albatross for us. We are getting very well compensated. We, uh, we get about two to two and a half million ounces of silver for free. Uh, we'll be paid a three dollars and ninety cents an ounce for it as it's, as it's uh, going forward as compensation. So it comes, uh, and, and that, that is definitely offsetting our cost of this being delayed. It's actually very good compensation for deferring the 9 million ounces a year. So the structure that we set up there is a very, very good structure. It is the half, best half-built gold mine in the world, um, and it will be one of the best gold mines in the world once it's up and running. There's no doubt that the increase in precious metal prices, especially gold, although that is also a very healthy silver project, we'll get our 25% will be 9 million ounces a year. So you do the math. It, it could potentially be the largest silver mine in the world when it's up and running also. Is, um, is there a projection date? Do, do they know? Well, uh, you know, Barrick's schedule, is, it's all contingent on them getting their permits reactivated on the Chilean side. Um, the reason there's been a bit of interest lately is because Barrick is going to go back and review if there's opportunities to potentially start up on the Argentinian side and move the project forward, starting on the Argentinian side of the border itself. And so, so they've got George B. now has come on. They're starting to put some focus onto it. You know, it's, it's the reason that we invest into high quality assets is because we know that our partners are always going to want to move these things forward. And, and that's what we're seeing is that even at, at uh, today's prices, this is up the flagpole in terms of uh, Barrick wanting to actually do some work on it. So. Now, I started by saying that you are sitting on top of the world. You've had a phenomenal year as the mining space has, has had, but year to date, you're up 118%. You had a phenomenal August. Uh, what's next for Silver Wheat in your well, we're hopeful to close a few more transactions. I mean, right now, what we're dealing with is uh, very, very strong cash flows, um, which, you know, our hope is to continue putting that back into the ground and keep on adding. Uh, you know, as, as, uh, as, as I've heard a few people say, the best vault in the world is the ounces that we have in our, in our ground, our reserve and resource base. And so, so we're still very active on the corporate development front. You have to keep in mind, although we've seen a bit of a bounce back in precious metal prices, right. our biggest client is the base metal producers. And so the base metal producers, yeah, they're still, they're, they're not doing great. And so in terms of sources of, of, of capital, we are still very competitive in that space. And so we see lots of opportunities out there and we're hopeful that we can crystallize a few more opportunities here in the, in the near term. Gold and silver forecast, how do you see it? <laughs> do you think there's gonna be a rate hike in December? That could you know, throw a curveball here? I almost wish there would be so we'd stop talking about it. It's incredibly frustrating to, to, to you know, watch how much value is swung and lost just by the whims of of people's thoughts, uh, you know, on, on different different metrics and such. I'd, I'd like to get it behind us. Um, I personally don't understand 
the rate hike. I don't understand the mechanics behind why the United States would even want to do that. They're the, you know, it'd be the only country in the world that would actually be considering strengthening their currency when every other country in the world, every other jurisdiction in the world is devaluing their currency to try and be more and more competitive on an international basis. And so, you know, between now and December, of course, we've got the election done in the United States, and I think that's probably going to have the, uh, the biggest impact on, uh, on precious metal prices. Randy and so that's what I'm watching. Thank you so much for coming on, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for being on. Always a pleasure, Danielle. Thanks Thank for you. watching our coverage here from the Minds and Money Conference in Toronto. We'll have more for you on Kiko.com, so be sure to stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Randy.